Welcome to the first Black Build Live, a series showcasing and highlighting Black entrepreneurs. The goal of this monthly series is to learn from and connect with Black-owned businesses because one, uh, we certainly cannot be successful on our own. Connections are definitely key. And two, learning from others allows us to really make fewer mistakes and it helps us all propel forward. The first feature is Jerry Jordan. I interviewed him about a year and a half ago. He has done so much amazing work since that interview, but with the passing of Miss Melele, um, it really pushed me to get the story out there and get this series started. May she rest in peace. In an interview with Wisconsin Live, Ms. Menele stated that my greatest goal has been social justice in the broader sense, to promote the things that would be peaceful, to help others understand that we all have a contribution in life. And she said, I think Emoja revolutionized the way black people are portrayed in Madison. So without further ado, our first feature, Jerry Jordan. Jerry Jordan is a portrait artist based in Madison, Wisconsin, who desires to amplify the contributions of African Americans to local, national, and global culture. At an Omega Sci-Fi cookout, Jerry Jordan's trajectory as an artist really changed. There, Jerry met Omoja's founder, Melele Chikasa Anana, who created this phenomenal magazine to highlight positive stories within the black community in Madison. So the rest is really history. To date, Jerry's art has been featured on over 20 or so Emojo issues. His visibility allowed him to really grow his business. As community members saw his art in the Emojo um, issues, they reached out to him and asked for their own personal portraits of themselves. In 2002, American Family Insurance used his portrait of an illustration he drew of the Pullman Rail Company in the 1920s. And that, that portrait was the face of a national ad campaign. Last year, Madison College hired Jerry to paint a mural in their new Goodman South campus. He named that portrait Legacies. It's a five foot by 10 foot oil painting that features Madison's black pioneers, trailblazers, and other national figures. In addition to Legacies, the mural, Jerry Jordan's art has been displayed at the Overture Center for the arts and other galleries throughout the city. So let's get to Jordan's story. I am a professional painter. Um, I've been painting and drawing and painting, doing some form of art most of my life. Um, I went to University of Wisconsin Whitewater for art, where I majored in studio art. I do commission work, portraits, you name it. Well, I've always wanted to be an artist. Um, from a very young child, I, I wanted to do, to do art, some, some type of art. At one point, I wanted to be a comic book artist, um, album cover artist. Um, I just knew, always knew I wanted to be an artist of some type. And um, it seems like this was my gift, so I've been working at it diligently for years, trying to be the best painter I can be. Well, I went to, I went to Uni University of Wisconsin Whitewater for art, but I didn't have any role models. It was just I did not see any black artists. Um, I never heard of black painters before, and so I asked one of my professors about black painters. He told me, he looked me right in the eye and said, well, Jerry, there just simply haven't been any black painters of note. And, and I knew that couldn't be, you know, I didn't know of any black artists, but I knew that just could not be the case. I knew that couldn't be true. And so I, um, one day in the library, um, I stumbled across this section of books called the Harlem Renaissance, and I discovered all these painters on my own. Um, and it, it just like, just opened the door it was painters like Aaron Douglas, uh, James Porter, um, just you, you name it, it was just a lot of different painters. It just showed me that I could do it. It gave me inspiration to really follow my dream of being a professional painter. And how far along are you at that dream? Have you made it? Have you arrived? I don't know if you ever consider yourself arriving as a painter. Um, I, my work has n just now reached a point where I am um, beginning to feel very confident about it, um, starting to gain some uh, notoriety and um, recognition about it, but I still have a ways to go. Well, I am an um, academic advisor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison uh, School of Education. I'm also a recruiter, so I wear two hats there. And so that is uh, kind of like my full-time job that pays the bills, allow my kids to eat, but my art is really my passion, and so I get up 
at four, between four and four thirty every morning, and paint for like two hours, uh, two or three hours before I started getting ready to go to work. And on the weekends, um, it just a thing. I get up five o'clock every Saturday and Sunday, and I paint to noon. So that, that's kind of my process, and I carry a notebook, a sketchbook with me always. Um, I'm always looking for really cool ideas for paintings, uh, for models, and um, yeah, that's kind of my process. Always keeping my eyes open for for something new and different, and trying to be creative. The the commission process works a little like this. I we we set up a meeting, and um, I I like to go to their home or maybe their office, and we'll have a photo shoot, and I take a uh, do a number of sketches. And then um, just kind of like action sketches and then just take a, a bunch of pictures. And then we kind of sit down and look at all the pictures I've taken and kind of figure out what would be a best design for the painting, what would be the best concept, what they would like to see. And um, kind of just get an idea of who they are, just sit and talk with them if they have time, have a conversation. And as we're having this conversation, I'm observing mannerisms, how they hold their head, um, how they smile, that sort of thing. If one eye is half closed, I just really observe all that. And I'm also looking at the undertones of the skin. As the natural light comes in through the window, hopefully I can see um, the undertones in their skin. If it's a green or blue, um, purple undertones, I see the pinks in the skin, yellows, that sort of thing. So it's a process. And then I get back to my studio and I started doing sketches and I will send them a couple pictures of the sketches, oil sketches of what I think the paint, how I want the painting to look and I invite them to, um, to give suggestions. My motivation is um, going to the art museums and looking at the works of other um, painters, well-known painters. Um, I, I follow them and whether the uh, contemporary painters or artists have been have passed on a long time ago. Um, just seeing their work and the quality of the work that they produced uh, really keeps me going. Um, part of my motivation to, to pursue my art, because I, um, like, like everybody, you want to make a name for yourself and you want to leave a legacy behind for your, um, for your children. Um, it's it's kind of cool for my, my, my daughter right now has at least four or five portraits of her from, um, from six months on to the age of 14. My son has a number of paintings done of him as well as portraits from childhood to young adulthood. And so this is a legacy I'm leaving behind and yeah, just, it just leaves a legacy behind for them. As well as shows them what hard work can do, determination and hard work. Uh, many people would have given up a long time ago. Art is not a, painting and uh, drawing is not a profession that most uh, people, let alone black people, think of as a way of making money and making a living. And, um, and so many people would have given up on it, um, but I have pursued it. I am determined to keep pursuing it until um, it happens. And my motivation also is to make my wife, of course, to be proud of her husband. Uh, my wife, Naira, um, has stuck by me the entire time. She has never complained about me spending money on um, art supplies. Um, and yeah, it has been my biggest cheerleader. And she's probably, um, has modeled for me more than anybody, from just being a hand model to just modeling when she's ironing clothes and stuff, I have her modeling. She's, she's not necessarily happy about doing that at that moment, but she'll let me do it. So every son wants to make their parents um, proud. And so my parents have been very encouraging of my work, um, buying me supplies when I was a kid and as well as when I was in college. And so they have uh, been very supportive of my work. So yeah, that's, that's part of this. That's another element that keeps me working hard and, um, and determined to succeed. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jerry Jordan, for allowing me to interview you. There were so many nuggets during this interview. I'll just highlight three. Pursue your passion, no matter if you have to get up super early in the morning or work on weekends. Never arrive, keep growing, keep learning, keep expanding your, your knowledge. And lastly, 
determine your why and ensure that you have a supportive uh, team that's by your side that really motivates you to keep on going. Again, I'll be doing these series once a month. So if you'd like me to interview you and discuss your journey to business, definitely reach out. Until next time.